here I am coming back to my starting position. So here my displacement is not 2 pi r, it is 0. I am not covering any shortest distance. The shortest distance to point P is not moving at all. Thus here my displacement is 0. Remember displacement can be negative or can be 0. Thus to summarize my displacement is always lesser than or equal to my distance. Now let us talk about one dimensional motion. One dimensional motion basically means rectilinear motion. That means my object will only be traveling in a straight line. So let me tell you about two words that you'll be using constantly throughout this topic. That is scalars and vectors. Let me tell you about scalars. Scalars have only magnitude and no direction. Magnitude means just a numerical value. Like in the case of distance, I told you that I could move from A to B in any direction I wanted. So I do not have a specific direction here, which means distance is a scalar. Similarly, speed is a scalar. Coming to vectors, vectors have both magnitude as well as direction. So I said when I talk about displacement, I will be moving from point A to point B. I said from point A to point B. That is in this direction. We denoted by an arrow. Now, vectors are usually examples like displacement and velocity. So, scalars can be written like I traveled 5 meters. But when I talk about vectors, I will say 5 meter towards the north, south, east or west. I would now like to add a bit of a note here. You know that speed is distance upon time and velocity is displacement upon time. This all we refer to as the rate of change of distance and rate of change of displacement. So speed is nothing but a rate of change of distance and velocity is referred to as rate of change of displacement. The rate of change is denoted by d by d. It is a differentiation or a derivative of distance or displacement. So this is the mathematical representation of velocity and we will be using this frequently. These are a few very very important formulae that will be used throughout the physics of class 11. So do note them down for future reference. The derivative of x raised to n. n is any integer or any kind of natural number. So here you can see it is n x raised to n minus 1. The derivative of sin x is cos x. Derivative of cos x is minus sin x. Derivative of tan x is secant square x. Derivative of e raised to x is e raised to x. And derivative of log x is 1 by x. Now let us discuss about average speed. Like I said, speed is associated with distance. So average speed is nothing but the total distance travelled upon the total time taken. This is the fundamental formula we will be using throughout. Next, let us come to another similar word which is average velocity. If you remember correctly, I also told you that velocity is a vector and it is associated with displacement. So average velocity, the formula to this is total displacement by the total time taken. Note down these formulae and get ready for a numerical. Position Q is at 240 meters and P is at 360 meters. It is given that the time taken for the car to travel from O to point P is 18 seconds 
and from point P back to point Q is 6 seconds. Here we need to find the average speed and the average velocity from point O to point P and the second part from point P, O to P and then back to Q. I will start with the first part. So let us first calculate the average speed. I already gave you the formula and average speed is given by the total distance travelled by the total time taken. So from O to P, the total distance travelled is 360 meters. So 360 and the total time taken is O to P that is 18 seconds. That means 20 meter per second. Now if we talk about average velocity which is denoted like this. It is the total displacement by the total time taken. So from O to P, the displacement or the shortest distance is also 360 meters. So 360 upon 18, 18 seconds is the time taken. That is again 20 meter per second. So these are the first part solution of this question. Now if we talk about the second part. The second part is... It starts to get a bit complicated, but let us see how to solve this in a simple manner. So for part B, they have said from point O to point P and then back to point Q. So we go like this and then we come back here. So in addition to traveling 360 meters, we are traveling 120 meters extra, which means the total distance that we are covering is 480 meters. What about the total time taken from O to P plus time taken from P to Q? That is 18 seconds plus 6 seconds. That is again 24 seconds. So which means 20 meter per second is the average speed for this. Now average velocity is given by the total displacement by the total time taken. Now here the average velocity. So displacement is from point O to point Q because this is the shortest distance to reach point Q. So displacement is actually just 240 meters. So 240 by the total time taken will remain same that is 24 seconds because the time is taken to move around this whole place. That means 18 seconds plus 6 seconds. So our average velocity in this case is 10 meters per second. Now let us quickly discuss another concept which is acceleration. Commonly we all say that acceleration is velocity by time. But again here a mathematical representation of acceleration is derivative of velocity. That means the rate of change of velocity. Again the rate of change is denoted by d by d of velocity of today let us discuss graphs before i begin to discuss the graphs let me tell you the two categories of graphs we will be discussing today position time graph and velocity time graph here it is important to note that the slope of the graph it will be given by the derivative that is in position time graph the derivative is dx by dt that is derivative of position with respect to time similarly in velocity time graph the derivative will be dv by dt that is derivative of velocity with respect to time hope this part is clear and now let us begin with learning the graphs in this graph as you can see the position does not change with respect to time this shows that velocity is zero and the object is at rest in this graph, you can see that the position is uniformly increasing with increase in time. So, here the velocity is constant. Here you can see that the position is continuously decreasing uniformly with the increase in time. Here as well, the velocity is constant. In the previous two cases, you saw that the velocity was constant and thus acceleration was zero. But in this case, position changes non-uniformly with time and thus velocity is not constant. In this velocity time graph, you can see that the slope of the graph is zero. That means dv by dt or 
acceleration is zero. In this graph, the velocity is uniformly increasing with the increase in time. Thus here, the acceleration will be constant. Now, yet another similar case with the position time graph. The velocity is non-uniformly increasing with the increase in time and hence the acceleration is not constant and variable. That is, it is increasing continuously. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you learned anything new, do not forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel. Also, the part 2 of this video will be coming out soon. So note down all the formula and get ready for the next part. Bye!